Hello and welcome to EDUC 500. This is a two-part lecture on understanding the course. I'm Dr. Heilbrenner and I'll be your instructor for this course. I'm an associate professor in the School of Education and I'm also the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Throughout this course, we'll be getting to know each other better, but because it is an online learning format, I thought it would be important for the first lesson to consist of understanding the course. So we're going to be doing that in this video. We're going to be doing three things in this two-part lecture. The first is we'll discuss the expectations of an online learning course. For some of you, this may be your first online course, and it's a little different than a face-to-face -face course. I'll also be providing you with some resources for online learning and we'll be carefully reviewing the course syllabus, which is, in a sense, your contract for the course. As in any course, you have certain responsibilities and I have certain responsibilities. Let's discuss each set of responsibilities. You, as the learner, ultimately assume responsibility for what you learn. And so that by that I mean it's up to you to pace yourself, to do the readings, to do the activities and assignments. And the more you do, the more you'll take out of this course. One thing I want to discuss is that effort is not all that is required. Frequently, I hear student appeals at the School of Education. And the most common thing a student will say to me is, I tried very hard at this course, and yet I got a poor grade. But the reality is it's the quality of work you turn in and not the amount of effort that earns your grade. If you're working very hard and you're doing a good job, that's great. But if you're working very hard and the grades that you're getting you're not satisfied with, then you have to look at how you work, how smart you work. And for that, you need to really consider getting help through some of the resources we have here or by, cons by consulting with the instructor. It's important that you communicate with me early and often. Send me an email. Just tell me how you're doing. Send me an email through the course site or at my Mercy email, which I'll get to later. I've provided contact information. Particularly if there's a concern, send me an email. I love to hear from students. Know the drop date, which is in April, to withdraw from this course. If you do not drop by that date and you're not doing the work, you could receive an F or an FW. Respect your colleagues. We'll be doing a lot of discussion online in the course, and I expect the dialogue to be professional and courteous. Do participate in the discussions. Do participate by handing in assignments, and do participate by communicating with each other and with the instructor. Finally, turn in your assignments in a timely fashion. I don't have a strict late grading policy, except for discussion assignments, but if you don't turn them in and in a timely fashion, you may find assignments piling up and become uh, get yourself into a point where you can no longer recover. I have responsibilities as well. Chief among my responsibilities is to provide you with quality lessons, something that you can really dig into content and learn deeply. I also have a responsibility to be responsive to you. And generally, you'll find if you email me, I get back within 24 hours. I have a responsibility to be firm about course assignments, yet slightly flexible as, as individual circumstances require. I've tried to organize the structure of the class so that it will support in a clear way, your learning. And I have a responsibility to be fair and impartial in my grading and in my communications with you. Because this may be an, a new type of format for some of you, I've provided some resources for online learning. Here at Mercy, we offer many resources, but chief among them is the Mercy College Online Learning Support, and I've provided you a link here. If you're struggling with this type of format, please contact them and they can arrange a private tutoring session. We also have writing and research support 
at the link that I've provided here. So if you're struggling with your papers, this is a good place to go. And we can also provide you with individual tutoring, tutoring for a number of issues. Online appointments may be made at the link I've provided. Let's take a look now at the syllabus. You should have printed the syllabus and it should have it sitting there in front of you. The thing that you will notice at the top of all Mercy College School of Education syllabi is this graphic. This graphic will show you our conceptual frameworks. Each box represents a conceptual framework and we organize our learning and our courses around these frameworks. For example, in every course you will be provided with something about technology. You will be provided with information about pedagogy and professional knowledge. You will come to understand how diverse students are and how to deal with issues of diversity. We expect you to maintain professional dispositions and we will teach you those dispositions in our program. We expect you to learn content knowledge and to reflect on that content knowledge. Throughout your courses here at Mercy, you will see the, this diagram as a reminder of some of the activities you will be doing in the course. Let's go on. Here you have the information for the course, including my contact information. You'll see that I do hold office hours. However, if these office hours don't fit your schedule, please send me an email and I will be happy to set up a separate meeting with you. If you would prefer Skype, you can send me a contact request. My handle is Heilbrunn, H-E-I-L-B-R-N, and we can conduct a meeting by Skype. My contact email is also provided here. And I do prefer this email over the course email. However, I will respond to both. Here we have the course description. You can look through this course description and see what's up ahead. We have the School of Education mission statement and a statement of academic integrity. We take plagiarism very seriously here at Mercy College. In a couple of weeks, I will be giving you a plagiarism module so that you can learn what plagiarism is and what it is not and how to pro properly cite sources. But take a moment and read through this academic integrity statement because there are consequences for plagiarism. Here we have a stu statement about students with disabilities. If you have a documented accommodation, you should email me and let me know that. Tell me the, when you have the accommodation documented through our Office of Accessibility and what the accommodation is. If you believe you have a disability and would like to have that accommodation documented, please send an email to Makita King, K-I-N-G, at the Office of Accessibility and meet with her so that you can document that accommodation and receive that accommodation. There is, this is an online class, and here you see the course standards, the professional standards around which this course is organized. I want to draw your attention to the student learning outcomes cited here. This is what you can expect to learn in the course. So for example, you should be able to, by the end of the course, provide an overview of the historical development of American education. You should be able to describe various general philosophies of education, develop a personal philosophy of education, and relate it to a formal philosophy. You should be able to list different groups, including various administrators and supervisors that exert influence on public schools and how these affect the relationship between school policies, practices, and financing. I will let you read the rest of these outcomes on your own. There is one required textbook that you should already have ordered. If you have not done so, it's imperative that you order it immediately because the readings have started. 
Some of you have emailed me asking if the ninth edition of this textbook is fine. That would be fine, but I wouldn't go back farther than that. An optional but recommended textbook is the American Psychological Association, or APA, manual. This manual will be a guide in your writing experiences throughout your program. Most of your papers are required to be submitted in what we call APA format, and this guide tells you how to write in that format. Below the APA manual, you see the course timetable listed. Each week, you will see the, the session listed as follows. Session 1, due by Sunday, January 25th. I tried to post all of the activities by Monday, and these are due by the following Sunday at midnight, Eastern Standard Time. You see the topic for this week, Becoming a Teacher. You see what the readings are for the week. So this week you should be reading Chapter 1 of the Sad Curve text and reviewing the EdTPA website, which we'll discuss in more depth soon. Consider the following questions are, for, are there to guide your reading. You don't have to respond to them in a formal way. However, you should preview them before your reading. You'll see the note, Complete Learning Module 1 and Discuss posting one or assignment one. Where is learning module one? If you click on course material as you did had to do to get here and you, you will see a list of the learning modules. Learning module one is the folder that you had to click on. There is a README first file and it lists all the activities for the learning module. For example, in this week, you have to read Chapter 1 and take an online quiz. You have to read a case study. You have to listen to this lecture. And you have to respond to a discussion posting. Please be sure to, to open and review the file Read Me first each week to see what your responsibilities are for that week. All assignments must be uploaded to Blackboard. All the links and activities and resources that you need to complete are in Learning Module 1 folder. Sometimes you will be doing a discussion posting, which I'll discuss later, and sometimes you will be working on one or more assignments. Each week's assignment is due by Sunday midnight Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes you have major assignments due. When this happens, you will see them in red in your syllabus. For example, under Session 5, due Sunday, February 22nd, you will note that you will have a major assignment, your reflection paper, which is due. This is a good way to keep track of what's coming up. We'll be discussing assignments in a second. 